Janice is the author of three novels, actually. She has uh, published My Brother Michael, Myra Sims, and The Schooling of Claybird Cats. And uh, she's the uh, last child and only daughter of a Pentecostal preacher um, turned insurance salesman. We were having brunch this morning with a preacher turned coffee uh, shop owner. Uh -huh. and we were telling her about uh, uh, your, uh, your heritage there, and she said, I can relate. <laughs> um, Janice inherited her love of storytelling and biscuit making from her parents, and uh, she lives in Newberry, Florida now, and is going to tell us a little bit about how the book came to be and uh, what's in it. We have uh, some uh, goodies that uh, they all have made, so we hope that uh, we'll, we'll share them all. Um, right goodies out of the from book. the cookbook. <clears throat> right out of the cookbook. So, uh, Janice, without further ado, welcome. Thank oh, you. For thank, you. thank you. I can't tell you how fun and cozy this is to me is to face the snow falling outside while we sit here and talk about books. And uh, it, it sounds like a perfect Georgia way to spend a Georgia Sunday to me. So thank you all for, for yeah, you know, uh, endangering your fenders of your cars by coming out to see me. So I just am going to talk to you all just a little bit about how I came to write a uh, memoir cookbook with such an audacious name. And uh, I am a novelist by trade. I'm a storyteller and I'm a novelist by trade. And I've written three novels that were set in this little corner of West Florida called Jackson County. And I was born there, but I didn't grow up there. But my mother grew up there. And she grew up on the end of town called the West End and in a little tiny neighborhood called Magnolia Hill. And my mother is a um, great Southern storyteller. You know, she's the family folklorist who holds all our stories and she tells you all. And you're worked into her stories like little threads of tapestries. And I, I really think my mother has some, um, some I, I'm not just saying this to be, to be outrageous, this like um, a spectrum of autism that they haven't found yet because the way she communicates is by telling stories. She cannot communicate a direct thought, you know. If I told her the exact, you know, facts of us being here today, that would not work. She would bring it into there and the snow was falling. We went to this little shop and both there at Jeff and Jeff, but one of them spelled their names with one, you know, one. And it would be a whole story. And Michael was there, you know, at least Michael. And you know, it would be this whole story and it would have a dramatic shape, you know, and the snow falling and the danger of, you know, us all getting here. And so she can't um, Mama, I grew up on her telling me stories about the West End of Mariana like this. And they became, I was real quiet, real shy as a child. And I think that um, I, because I love my mother so much that I uh, just made that, that became a magical little part, that poor side. The men worked at a mill. And it, it actually has a real reputation in Marianne, as everybody knows you're poor if you come from this side. So my father moved around with his uh, church and with his insurance. He was, a, he was a policy man. He wasn't an insurance executive. He sold policies door to door, you know, burial policies uh, for the independent life insurance company. And he moved around a little bit when I was a child, and then we came back to North Florida. Growing up in Florida, even um, in the 70s, there was a, a lot of different... Um, yeah, a lot of newcomers coming in, and we lived um, in a um, you know a subdivision that just been built. You know, all the trees cut down, and then you build um, houses. You know, and streets and suburbs. And when I was a child, we had a little bit of an identity crisis because we were red hot rebels. You know, we knew that we had direct great great grandfathers. One of them had died in the Battle of Atlanta, and two of them had been captured. And we were just red hot little Southerners. Had beach towels with the rebel that said "Forget <laughs> hell." You know? And uh, I tried to explain. I had that in in the cookbook, and I could not make them understand why I was talking. So I said, "Just let it go. It's not that important." So you know that was our we were adamantly that way but then on the other hand and I love Gone with the Wind I don't mean to be picking on uh, because I do have a lot of little um, uh, pokes at uh, Gone with the Wind and Scarlet in my book but I loved uh, Margaret Mitchell's Gone with the Wind I loved her that book I read it when I was 13 and so I seized on oh, this is what we are we're southerners we lived in big plantation houses and then the Yankees came and burned everybody down and that's how we got to be as poor as we always <laughs> been <laughs> So it was, so it was just that it explained everything, you know. So then I came to Atlanta when I was 16 because I read it and read it and read it. I read it all about 800 times. And when I looked around Atlanta and said, 
well, it's, you know, I couldn't find a link, even though my mother was from um, Rome, um, Georgia, I couldn't find roots and links. And um, I finally found my great aunt, who I love, Aunt Izzy, who has a banana pudding in the book. And I said, Aunt Izzy, in Alabama, where y'all were from, was there a big house? Was there a tariff? And she said, well, a cousin, some relative of ours, did own a house with a big porch and a veranda and said when we were children, they would let us drink at the well as we walked home to the little shack they lived in. And I was like, well, dang, we don't live in. So I couldn't, we couldn't find, I couldn't find our, you know, I couldn't find our path. And in Florida, um, because, you know, our families had been uh, rural people who had lost their land usually. Some of them stayed on the land. My father grew up on a farm. My grandfather bought a little tiny farm. He was self-sufficient in Mariana, inside the city limits. So it's only four acres, but it was a working farm. He, he sold his produce. He raised hogs. He did everything. And I, I knew our ties with the land, but there, is, there were words to describe us, but they were insulting. They were like white trash and trailer trash, and they were just rednecks. We were poor people. And I was not necessarily insulted by any of that, but it didn't <laughs> seem like it described us. And in anger, and sometimes joking around, we describe ourselves as crackers. And it became, cracker became my word of choice. And I didn't know, it didn't sound insulting to me. And in Florida, as the 70s went on to the 80s, it became a point of pride. And you would explain, say, well, we were just crackers. We're, and that would mean you were native to Florida. You hadn't moved in from somewhere else, you know, you were native. And so in, in Florida, in some parts of Florida, it became this reverse snobism, you'd say. Well, they'd say, in order to be a cracker, you had to be born in Florida to be a Florida cracker. And preferably, you had to be three generations, and you had to have a certain, um, you know, pedigree. So I would, um, so fortunately, I just was born right inside the, um, the Jackson County in Florida, but I would um, self-describe as that. And by that, um, I, I didn't mean, I, I knew there was a right, sometimes we were called crackers in contempt. When my husband was a school teacher, um, uh, a little, when he, about a sixth grader got mad at him, and um, it's so hilarious. We laughed and laughed about this little black kid, and he walked past him in the hallway because Wendell, he, he was usually a kid that loved him, and they loved, they had a good teacher-child relationship, but somehow Wendell had crossed him. And I, he walked past Wendell, it was, it was a boy, wasn't it, a little boy? And he walked past Wendell and said, 100% pure saltine. <laughs> and he was talking about being a cracker. But those kind of things were just funny to us, because we were, we were crackers, yeah, that's what we were. So, um, you know, I, I wrote a book, and in my novels, I, I didn't make that big a deal about it, but, you know, they would self-refer to, you know, or, you know, tell that dumb cracker, or, you know, we'd refer between ourselves as crackers, and it was kind of a funny word, and then I published my books, and then eventually began going around and speaking to books, and when I was outside of uh, Florida, or out, or on the edge, very edge of Florida, or I was outside of the Deep South, and I'd be on a panel, and I would self-describe, I said, well, I'm more of uh, not gone with a wind southerner, I'm more of a cracker. And the reaction people would have, like, what did you say? And I, I was being introduced to a panel in Jacksonville at Much Ado About Books, and it was this big, big room full of people. And on the panel, the lady who was the moderator was this really nice lady who's the curator of the African American Museum in Jacksonville. And when I said I was a Florida cracker, she burst out laughing. And she's a very professional woman. And then she was like looking at the room saying, okay, I'm sorry. Okay, hold on. Just get... Okay. Janice. You self-described. That's interesting. But you decided it! <laughs> and then she started laughing and she could not... Finally, I just had her sit with me. I was like, that's okay, baby. I know. You're trying. And she was like... And she told me later, that was hilarious to me but that you really do that. So it, it became that when I would say that word, I would say, brace yourselves, you know, especially if there were any black people in the audience, I'd say, brace yourselves for what I'm about to call myself. I'm a Florida cracker. And um, people, a lot of people in the audience um, would say, well, that's what we are. That's what, or that's what my grandmother always said she was, you know, and so it would bring it a nice discussion, a nice interest in this little subspecies of the South, you know, that, that still, still described as a cracker and you know all of the different fireworks around it so